we need to put the effort into the strong ones. Uh, they, they, they are the most important ones as we need to transport them as well. For us to save all the eggs is going to be a lot difficult. Um, we need to uh, do an incubator that's going to take up too much time. So we, we, it's unfortunately, and, and we don't want that, and I don't want to say that, but somewhere nature needs to do their own thing as well. We're going to have a look for more chicks or whatever, but the organizers don't know what is there at this stage. <laughs> Our day starts now at four. Four, we started with the feeding. It lasts us out about an hour. In between, we need to monitor all the birds. We might need to prepare the food. We need to make sure everything is clean. The birds are still safe. Um, then at eight, we start with the next feeding. Um, volunteers came in, they start to feed, we clean up. So the process goes on. In between the feedings, we still need to go out to the pen to assess there and see what's going on at the pen. We still need to communicate. The permits must go on if we receive enough birds. We, they, the, we must apply for the permits at the department. The transport must get um, uh, arranged. And uh, yeah, so our day is fully packed. The future doesn't look bright. Um, unfortunately, the, our biggest worry is that if we don't get the rainfall this week, the mothers who are sitting with their chicks may abandon the chicks and, and fly over somewhere. And if that happens, we'll have more than 3,000 chicks to deal with, and that could be a disaster. So we pray as we see the clouds forming in the sky that there will be rainfall this week or at least before, before the middle of the week. As this is a first time project in its massive scale, how do you reintegrate a couple of thousand juveniles and where? Uh, we'll have to check it out, we'll have to investigate it properly, and we'll have to make sure whether there, there's two options. One, completely wild, you leave them and they take care of themselves, which I would not suggest, or two, semi wild. They're still wild, they're still there on a dam, they're still in a distance, nobody can get to them, but they are monitored by the correct people in authorities so that there's no poaching. The big problem and the second phase challenge is once they can eat themselves is to try and not have a further human imprintation on them. The human imprint is the biggest problem if you want to later uh, reintegrate these birds into flamingo flocks or, co or colonies. Uh, the second uh, big challenge is to find the correct spot or dam or dams. 
once they are juveniles and they can eat themselves, you can put them at those dams, but there must be the correct mud and ground so they can make the nests. These nests, all of them, they build themselves and they build it like swallows. They lay, some of them lay the egg and then they, whilst they breed, they build it higher and higher. Others make the nest completely and they make a bit of a hollow and they put one egg. They should be named and tagged and DNA'd and they should be tracked and monitored. It's an endangered species. It should also uh, be the statistics and feedback to the public that is so concerned and aware and assisting so that they can know what has happened eventually and how successful this project is.